ESPN Player, your home for more than 5,000 live college games. NCAA football, including the college bowls and playoff. NCAA basketball, including March Madness. All the great action you'd expect from ESPN. Plus your favorite ESPN studio shows with SEC Network, ESPNU, and Longhorn Network TV channels available 24-7. Hours and hours of live sport available at your fingertips. Watch the games you love anytime, anywhere on ESPNPlayer.com. We are the force. We are the Lions. Temperatures have it feeling more like January than late November in the Queen City tonight as Arkansas Pine Bluff visits the Cincinnati Bearcats. Good evening and welcome inside of Fifth Third Arena on the campus of the University of Cincinnati. Tom Glitter thrilled to be alongside former Bearcat and my broadcast partner Terry Nelson as we get you set for this fifth meeting between these two teams and the Bearcats return home, Terry, after a successful trip to Florida. The comeback sport in the bling, baby. They got that championship in the Emeralds Coast Classic and the reason that they come back was that because of the stellar play of two of their most dynamic players, one of them being one that you're going to be talking about for a long time and his name is Jaron Cumberland. Jaron over the last three games averaging about 21 points per game. His dynamic playmaking ability is something that really caught a lot of teams off guard because how much he got everybody involved but you can still see he was able to put up some good points. Two 25 point plus performances in his last three games for Jaron Cumberland. Where's Kane Broom? Well he's the spark off the bench this year for head coach Mick Cronin. And he puts that Allen Iverson group together. He comes off as the primary scorer off the bench. Surround him with some tough defensive minded guys let him go to work and you can see what he's capable of terry arkansas pine bluff arrives here in cincinnati coming off a win against a rival in arkansas little rock and boy do they have an explosive score a guy who has 40 plus points two times this season in martavius mcknight professional score i mean this guy much like lou williams for the los angeles clippers this guy gets buckets when i say he's got a green light that may be underestimating it 28 points per game, five rebounds for McKnight. The Bearcats will have to know where he is this evening. These teams have met four times previously, all wins by the Red and Black. Starters and the tip, Bearcats and the Golden Lions. Come your way next. A five and one on the season, and tonight welcome in the Arkansas Pine Bluff Golden Lions, two and four on the campaign. Tom Blair, Terry Nelson, back with you. Time to take a look at the starting lineups. No surprises at either end. The Bearcats, Jaron Cumberland. We already talked about him. Martavius McKnight, the talented guard for the Golden Lions. Mick Cronin now in his 13th season. That is all alma mater, 273 wins, and at the other end, a veteran head coach as well in George Ivory, now his 11th season. The Mississippi Valley State product, 121 wins since taking over. The ball is tipped to the fifth meeting between the Golden Lions. The Bearcats is underway with the ball going to the far sideline and quickly to the visitors. You don't see that much. He's just a little, a little anxious to get the jump ball and knock it out of bounds. McKnight, who has 240-plus point games in the first six contests of the season, will set things up and dribble towards Cronin on the far sideline. Van Yard on the baseline. Back to McKnight. Thought about triggering the three and held on to it. Over to the left, Jackson. His three ball off the mark. An air ball, but recovered at the baseline by Van Yard. Seven to shoot. And I think the officials are going to say caught the front of the rim. Play was stopped, and they're going to take a look on the monitor. I did not think that it caught the rim. Let's see. That's Oof. a good catch. It did. Wow. And he was in pretty much the same position as us, a step or two closer to the hoop, and probably just saw that very slight deflection. I don't know what they're paying him, but you can give him 25% of that right now. I mean, you know, right Chuck down. Jones, who's one of the officials at the monitor right now, he came over to us a moment ago right before we came back from break and said if anything crazy comes 
I'll come over and explain it to you. I said nothing crazy tonight, okay? Let's yeah. play basketball for 40 minutes, and we got an early deflection for a fresh shot clock. I don't think it's crazy, but a good catch to be certain. And they are going to reset the shot clock. Give it back to 25. Let's see if these cats can come out defensively and match up to what Pine Bluff is doing. There's a three from McKnight, a good look, rimmed off another offensive rebound, and McKnight over to Jackson. He'll have a look from the left side and finds the three ball. Instantly, out of the timeout, two breakdowns defensively for the Cats. Charles Jackson comes in averaging 11 points per game. He strikes first here tonight. Jennifer to Cumberland, looking to answer back, and he does. Right back at you, ain't cheating. Cumberland with the fade three, tied up. Full court press will come from the Bearcats, wearing their traditional home whites tonight. Arkansas Pine Bluff and all black, and they turn it over across midcourt. Ended up in the hands of Brooks. Cumberland will set it up over to the right side. Jennifer. Scott from the free throw line went down low, got it into the hands of Brooks. It was stripped away, and will stay with the Bearcats. That's what Brooks has got to be have intensity with the basketball. He catches the ball, perfect position, roll down, duck to him, but then he goes up soft and gets it knocked out. 20 to shoot for UC. Jennifer into Cumberland, another three, and another made bucket. And then he backs up and looks at him and mm -hmm. says, look, I got a 40-point game in me somewhere. I may break it out today. Coming off a big performance against Ole Miss. Last time out, 25 points, including 13 of 14 from the free throw strike on Saturday in Destin, Florida. Dublin picks up right where he's left off. Team's leading score at 18 points per game. He has all six for Cincinnati so far tonight. Unusual defense. You won't see this much in college basketball where everybody switches everything and it just creates opportunities where you have to take shots in certain pockets of the floor, which they want to because then it's easier to rebound it for the Bearcats. McKnight misses his second attempt of the evening and you see will look to extend their lead jennifer a three ball rattles at home and that's if we're going to play this matchup right now for arkansas pine bluff it flattens out it's not truly a matchup it's just sort of a pass through like crossing guards bearcats have taken three shots all three pointers all have gone in you might see a record here tonight two and a half minutes down in they're certainly on pace for it mcknight Nearly has it stripped away by Williams. Able to recover and find Jackson, who can't hit. Cumberland's outlet pass oh, for Scott. Pass. Double teamed to Williams. His three ball off the back iron, no good. That's when you know if you were really going to be hot. Keith made that one, and they throw it away. See, this is a team that you don't want to get out and run. Yes, they want to push the pace a little bit. They want to get out and do what they do best. But you don't want to come into a game where you already have a big deficit and where you're expected to not even get close in the building and then throw balls away. Pine Bluff with the turnover, trailing by six in the early going. Attack, one-on-one. -on -one. Trayvon Scott into the lane, spins to his right, back to the left, now gets the shot off, it won't fall through. Look at the Bearcats. Keith back Williams. underneath, Keith Williams. The offensive rebound on the second chance points. The junkyard dog loves the offensive rebound. He goes after just about everything he can. They call it travel. That's the third turnover now. That bucket by Williams was the Bearcats' first two-point field goal of the night. I mean, look at this. Nasir Brooks is battling. He's trying to get something. He doesn't see it. Keith comes in there, picks his pocket. Almost. I thought he was going to dunk that one in. You know, he cocked it back like he was going to do something dangerous. So something strange for a piece of change. Look at him put it up there. Went with the safe move. 11-0 run for the Bearcats after the Golden Lions struck first. That's coming over a two-minute and 40-second period. And they have a chance to tack on a few more here. Cumberland coming off a great Emerald Coast Classic. MVP of that one where he really showed his leadership in that one. Trey Scott, the most underrated player on this starting five. and It's his first two of the night. There you go. Scott comes in averaging 10 points, six and a half rebounds per game. He gets the steal. Jennifer to Williams. He thought Williams had a chance at alley -oop. Was defended enough that he could not put it through. 13 to three with nearly four minutes gone in the first half. And then a little bit of physicality take place here. A lot of attention is going to be on Martavius Pinkheis. Yes. 
as you can you think Keith being their number one primary perimeter defender is gonna tackle a lot of that until they switch I mean, Friday night all he had was 40 points in 52 minutes a triple overtime affair will have the game's first foul as Banyard is taken down it's been a three party here at fifth third arena Jaron Cumberland in on the action If you're thinking about lease years early at home, trying to work on win number six on the season and the long ball, the formula for success so far tonight, Terry. It's the long ball. I'll tell you, they are knocking them down three out of four from downtown. You see Cumberland with a little look back. Justin Jennifer with the long three. Talk about somebody who's really taking care of the ball. But they come out and they look good. Nice little shot of my man. Cumberland. Good to see no letdown after the tournament. Two tough games going down. They played very well in Destin, Florida. You come home, you maybe look at an opponent that's two and four and are concerned that the team would come out sluggish. Hasn't been the case so far. You know who's coaching this team, right? McCrona. Jack B. Nimble. He lights that fire under this team every time they go to practice. There's no letdown in this team. Coach Cronin, one of the hottest coaches in college basketball. Second all-time winning as coach. Coaches under 50 years old. Benyard bangs home a pair of free throws. That ends the scoring guard of three and a half minutes. Pine Bluff, however, no field goal makes since that opening three. Four and a half minutes gone. Williams back to his right, onto the elbow. Kicks it out, Scott. Pump fake on the Too three, much. has it taken away by Banyard. Look at <laughs> the captain. And Sean Doss, the sophomore, is taken down by Justin Jennifer, his first personal foul. Well, when you get that ball in the high post, what they're doing is they're digging in the high post. So you have to catch it in the high, but then your low post player must shield himself down low. you got to flash rush across the middle, and you would catch it. Nasser Brooks should not be in the short corner because he's the tallest guy on the floor. So obviously you want Trey Scott to catch it in the high post because that collapses the defense, but you also want to kick it down low to your low post finishers. McKnight, the senior, dishes it in to Cameron Posey. His seventh appearance of the year. Started three games. Posey holding it above his head. Over to the left, Doss in an offensive foul. Call on Pine Bluff. It looks like Terrence Banyard. See, so got him hooking Jaron Cumberland. That's not much. I don't know. I don't know about that. I tell you what, basketball's become like Mr. Whipple, like Charmin or something. It's, it's just soft. Not like it was back in the days. Terry Nelson played here at Fifth Third Arena. Uh, Different looking fifth third arena as Jaron Cumberland gets two more. First team all AAC preseason showing you why the coaches and media had a chance to vote on that and says, yes, I like this guy. Eight points for Cumberland in the first five minutes. Puts his team back up ten. McKnight into the lane, squatted away as he went up with it, but a foul called on the floor first. Rashawn Fredericks. Rashawn Fredericks on the help defense didn't really have to because Keith Williams did a great job of sliding his feet, angling him away from the rim towards the side of the backboard. We have to put an angle up, which is easier for a shot blocker to come on the help side and block it. Instead, another guy comes over and hits him. There's the American preseason all-conference team you were discussing. Yeah, you, you notice it, all guards. <laughs> DJ Taylor. I tell you what, Jalen Adams, Adams is having... That UConn team yes. finally coming to life you know what, with they Coach got, Hurley taking the reins. They got a different coach there. He's a little bit more demanding, much like Mick Cronin, and he gets out of that team exactly what they had envisioned. McKnight oh. gets his first two for the free throw line, and then the other end, an answer back, Nasir Brooks. That's what you're supposed to do, big fella. If you finger roll one more time, you're going to do something with them fingers. Posey going down low. Brooks swatted at it and deflected the ball out along the baseline. I mean, you watch this penetration. One thing you see, nice little penetrate baseline, kick it to the roll guy, bam, and you put it straight up. He don't go up this soft. I thought Banyard got a piece of it, too, as he was going up, and it did not slow Brooks at all. Take him right to the baseline. That's good help side defense. McKnight loses it, and then Logan Johnson, the freshman who just checked on. How about Logan, the karate kid? The new look <laughs> for the youngster. Got the hair braided with the band around it, Under Armour. 
I tell you what, his defensive intensity really changed that game versus Mississippi. That old Miss intensity, what he can put pressure-wise on the ball makes him stand out and gets him playing time. Cumberland on the right wing. Looking to swing it over to the left side. It's intercepted and a turnover for the Bearcats. Will give the Lions a chance at the other end, trailing by 10. Banyard's shot doesn't go. Johnson's there, battling for the rebound, and he's fouled. Over the back, it was Trevor Banks. See, when you take out Justin Jennifer, who does not turn the ball over, 19 assists and only two turnovers on the season. But when you put in Logan Johnson, you may give up a turnover or two. But what you get as a trade-off is tremendous defensive intensity and somebody who can go in there and bang it out and rebound amongst the trees. Brooks on the left wing. Off to Cumberland. Looks to trigger a three. Instead, pass it off to Brooks. It came off his fingertips in the last two trips down the court. Cincinnati's been sloppy. Look at that defensive intensity right there by Logan Johnson who calls the travel. But that turnover was not on Brooks. That's on Cumberland. You can't throw a bullet pass three feet away from a guy. To Nasir Brooks. I mean, you watch this. Watch this dig down. He's got long arms. I had to text him on the way to the, on the bus on the way to the game. And I said, look, Coach Cronin only gives out playing time for guys that does what he wants. And understand, his mindset, Coach Cronin, is defense. Yes, if you score and do all the other things well, that will keep you in the game. But in order to get in the game, you have to have defensive pressure and intensity. And this guy, six foot, six foot one, maybe six two, six seven, six eight, arm span. Brooks will get a seat for the first time tonight. And so Semi comes on. Cumberland down low for Fredericks. Spinning on the baseline, 12-foot shot off the front iron is no good. So Semi, I believe, was fouled trying to get to the rebound. And it'll stay with the Bearcats with the first shot clock. One of the things I'd like to see LEL so Semi is he gets weak side rebound a lot, but he doesn't get it on the inside. And so you'll see one or two over the back fouls per game, but that's what he does. Cumberland threw ball from the corner was short. Rattled over the iron. Posey to McKnight. Six plus minutes now for the Golden Lions without a field goal make. Smith to McKnight. He can change that in a hurry. Shots too strong. Give it up. Fredericks gave it up to Johnson, but McKnight able to intercept the pass. McKnight into the lane is fouled on the shot. Coach Cronin's going to send Trayvon Scott out to make court to check back in. Not happy with the empty possessions the last few times down the court. Well, you're going to see Trayvon probably come in for Rashawn Fredericks because you get a ball, you steal it, and you throw a soft pass. You don't throw a bounce pass. You throw one where the defense can get a hand on it. And then you're not seeing the guard play that Coach Cronin wants. Yes, he's going to play people, but he's going to take Kane Broom out. And Kane Broom will come back in with a different lineup as a featured scorer. But Justin Jennifer comes in, he steadies the ship. One of the things Coach Cronin wants to see with Justin, a little bit more of his voice. He wants a little bit more of his articulation of what they need, what needs to happen on the floor. He's a, he's a vocal guy, but he wants more instruction. He is the point guard, the coach on the floor, and that's exactly what he wants from him. Free throw rattles off for McKnight. He made the front end miss the back, three points. For McKnight, who comes in averaging 28 points per game. <laughs> Good stuff, man. Jennifer, to the top of the key, Cumberland, pump fake, onto the right, Jennifer, three balls short. So Sene on the rebound, converts it, and has his first two. Get to the nose of the rim or the weak side, which means that three out of four missed shots will end up there, and you will be in perfect position to capitalize. Christian Robertson, who has just checked in, gives it off to McKnight. Eight minutes gone. The Bearcats' lead is 11. McKnight getting all the smoke. He wants it all. He's going to catch every defender UC has tonight. That might be a charge. Doss yes. into the lane, and the charge is called on Sean Doss. That is his first personal foul. It takes us to a timeout on the floor here at Fifth Third Arena. Last Wednesday, longtime Cincinnati Inquirer reporter Tom Gresham died at age 60. Gresh, as he was affectionately known, spent many years on the Bearcats beat, sharing his sense of humor and gags with everyone he met. Tom was a good friend, a great writer, and a better man. His influence in this city will not be forgotten. Rest in peace, Gresh.
on Fox Sports Ohio tomorrow at 6 p.m. Bearcats insider, then at 7.30, Cavs at the Thunder. Thursday at 6.30, the Blue Jackets host the Wild. All are right here on Fox Sports Ohio and streaming on the Fox Sports app. Tom Glitter, Terry Nelson back with you. As the Bearcats leading by double figures, six UC players have scored, led by Jaron Cumberland, who has as many points as the Golden Lions. He can get yep. her through the first eight plus minutes. He gets them in bunches. One thing Cronin says, yes, he can shoot threes, but that's not what he does best. He's a scorer, and he gets buckets. Jennifer driving down to the baseline. A foul will be called there on Anthony Davis Jr. It gets, it's personal for Justin Jennifer when he finds somebody that he's bigger than. Hmm. You know, it's not often. It's not often. That is the case at five foot ten. It is the case against Davis Jr. Just five foot nine. Pound for pound, he's stronger than most guys his size. Cumberland to Jennifer, unable to get a good look at a three, then takes it to the top of the key and drains it. You see that? That's just disrespect. He says, you're smaller than me. I'm going to shoot right over the top of you. And then he goes and picks up full court. Jennifer comes into this one averaging just over five points per game. Look at that defensive intensity by Johnson. And a turnover as Davis dribbles it off his foot. I mean, you watch this come off of this. He's dribbling. High post screen. You go underneath the screen, and you go all the way out, and you don't come out. And then he goes over, watch Logan. Look at these long arms of Logan Johnson. He just gets a hand on it and knocks it out. Inbounds pass to Trayvon Scott and a strong move down low will draw the foul on the bucket. What makes Trayvon so hard to guard down low is his ability to pivot and wheel. Now watch his little dream shake, puts it up, gets one off the glass. He is coming into a new role. He was an energy guy that got some big rebounds and a couple of dunks last year that were amazing. But this year, he's counted on to be a rebounder, an interior defender. He can guard every position on the floor at six foot seven, six foot eight. He jumps out of the gym. He's worked on his three-point shot. And now all of that hard work is coming to fruition. Nasir Brooks returns as we inch closer to the midway point of the first half. The free throw is good by Scott. He has five. Coming off that 9.9 .9 rebound performance. Played 33 minutes against Ole Miss on Saturday. Defensive pressure there from Williams. Pokes it away to the far side. Seek and destroy. This Bearcats team wants to prove to everybody that last year's defense was no fluke, even though they had two NBA players. Williams nearly has the steal, unable to hold on to it. Shot clock is down to 10 for the Golden Lions. McKnight, three ball, rims off no good. The long arms of Brooks pull down the rebound. Scott at the other end, under wow. up and in, and another foul. Are you serious? He catches that off the kick ahead from Cumberland, and he goes up, double pumps. Waits, gets a little nick on the elbow, and converts this layup. As Chris Smith committing the foul, his second personal coming off the bench. And Cincinnati right now clicking on all cylinders. The free throw is good, and they have a 20-point lead nine-plus minutes in. Well, this team is locked and loaded. I mean, they, they really coming from this, this trip over in Florida, the Emerald Coast Classic. They're really locked in. When you get a chance to get away and go on the beach and have some fun, you really get a chance to see what other guys are doing, and they figure out what the other teams are doing very quickly. Very high basketball IQ. Doss's three-pointer does not fall through. But now we'll go to the Bearcats. Nasir Brooks on the weak side, rebound, tried to get it, get it knocked out. But just the, the ability to get this team going offensively. you got a steady point guard and senior Justin Jennifer letting everybody know what they're supposed to do. Trevor Moore checks in the game. Cronin says the best three-point shooter he's ever recruited. And I beg to differ with that with Casimir Wright and Deion Dixon and all the other guys that come into this program under Cronin. Sean Kilpatrick Sean hit a few Kilpatrick, threes along yeah, the way. That, you know, that's... But you also got to look at the potential that Moore has. Now, Bibby Brown used to always say that the waiver wire is full of potential. <laughs> potential doesn't get you in the game with Cronin. Chris Smith commits the foul. That is his third. So trouble there for George Ivory. 
Brooks to the free throw spot where he misses the front end of two, comes into this game 12 of 18 from the stripe. That's the eighth team foul on Pine Bluff, 10 minutes in. They have as many fouls as they have points in the first half of this first half. And they came in right out of that timeout with eight turnovers. They have more turnovers and points right now. The Bearcats have converted their turnovers into 15 points so far. There's another opportunity for the Red and Black. They haven't seen this type of intensity and pressure yet. Yes, they lost to Colorado State. Yes, they had some tough losses, some where they were actually in the game. But I tell you what, they haven't seen a defense like this. Williams down low for Brooks. Had a great look at it. Didn't convert it. Got a flush at home on the second chance. Scott says, I'm here. You missed it. My turn. Ten points for Trayvon Scott. And then an exclamation point from Keith Williams. The steal and the dunk. And George Ivory's seen enough. Timeout called by the visitors. I mean, you just look at this. Penetration, throws it right over there. He misses it. I got it. Watch out. I'm going to put this up and kick a little knees up, Corey Blunt style. And then you get right out of the inbound pass. I mean, he just catches it and says, New York is in the house. And they're having some fun. Trayvon Scott with 10 of the Bearcats, 33 so far. He's in double figures for the fourth time in seven games this season, the eighth time in his career. Think about that four times here now as a retro junior. He's hit double figures four times in the two years combined before this year, and he's only seven games into the season. I mean, you think about his maturation. I mean, he is just now growing into what he is going to become, and he's not even close. Pine Bluff having a heck of a hard time getting it out of the backcourt, and they do not throw it away coming off a timeout. That's not going to make the heartburn go away for George Ivory. You know, people thought it was just uh, hyperbole when they said this team could be better defensively than they were last year or the last two years, especially when you had the two-time defensive player of the year in Gary Clark. But along that front line, they're more athletic. Kyle Washington was a great shot blocker in the score, but Trey Scott is superior defensively to him. Not Sarah Brooks can do a lot of things. He's got to get better defensively, but he has the potential to be one of the all-time greats defensively for the Bearcats. Scott's hook shot didn't fall through. Right now, Pine Bluff just trying to get something going. They've missed their last six shots and haven't scored for three and a half minutes. Wallace. 10-footer is good, ends all that. If you're going to score against this Bearcat team, the short corners are where it is. That's where the zone gives up. First two of the night for Marcus Wallace. Brooks answers at the other end. Deep post position, a nice high-low feed by Scott to Brooks. Four points for Nasir. Scott trying to get the steal a bit too aggressive just across midcourt. Yeah, see, they're, they're baiting him to think that the player is open. Then they're trying to shoot the passing lane. Watch this deep post right there. Catches it, keeps the ball high, goes up a little jump hook. He caught it right in the middle of the circle where the charge restricted area is. And you want to catch it, keep the ball high, keep those elbows up. You don't want to hit him with an elbow, but just put enough pressure to make him back up, shoot it over that left shoulder. Terry, the Bearcats on an 18-2 run over the last three and a half minutes. Anytime you can score 18 points in three and a half minutes, that's a successful stretch. Well, we call those death runs because that can just put you away. It puts you away. I mean, it's one of those things where you're in a game and it's nice. All of a sudden, they go on an 18-2 run and you start thinking about walk-ons and who else is going to get in the game. The Cronin won't let anybody start thinking about that just yet. McKnight got it back from Banyard and laid it up and threw it. Trevor Moore's got to realize that this guy he's guarding is a professional scorer. You don't help off on anybody else. When I say green light, I don't even know if green is the color that he has and he can shoot the ball. <laughs> Martavius McKnight played 52 minutes against Cal Baptist. That game went three overtimes. He played all but 30 minutes. And then had to turn around and play Little Rock the next day. That's what he does. I mean, this is college. Guys don't get tired now. Come on, man. We take coffee to wake up. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to follow up on that thought when we return from break. Keith Williams bringing some pain here at Fifth Third Arena. The skill and the maturation of this young man. He's so talented and skilled. He just had to trust the work that he put in. You know, his mom, Anita, was the coach, so she gave him the fundamental base that he needed. 
and the mindset to take hard coaching from Cronin. He's one of those guys where Cronin can coach him hard, and he just listens and does exactly what he hears instead of how he hears it. Because his mom was that way. His mom was one of those. She, she's a mother that would tell you exactly what you had to do, and if you didn't do it, you weren't playing. Or <laughs> she was going to get on you. So you look at his coaching. He's one of those guys that Cronin loves. The best way for him to keep his mama happy, play hard. The best on, way now. for us to keep her happy, call him Trayvon, not Trey. Trey. That's right. Well, she should be at the game. I told her she's got two daughters that are coming here. I said, what's the next move for you? You got to move to Cincinnati now. You would think. Hmm. All three of your kids are going to be here. Certainly a big signing for Coach Hurd. We'll tell you more about that one later. Anthony Davis Jr. swinging it down low and yet another turnover for the Golden Lions. Room oh, oh, underneath this. Williams oh, oh, spins, oh. connects, and has two more. That's Rucker Park all over right there. That's I'm gonna go this way. No, I'm nope. not. Hold on. <laughs> it's like you versus me in one on one. <laughs> you doing the little up and under move? Well, yeah, obviously. Yeah, right there. Look at this baseline. <laughs> That's like three Stooges right there. That's like you and me and yes. <laughs> someone else. Look at this. Oh, this is Dream Shake style against David Robinson. I saw this one. Akeem Olajuwon, Google it for all the or YouTube it for all you little all the youngsters who have no who idea who is. you're talking about. I came who? Yeah, they're the ones riding the birds on the elevator. Like, was he on the coming to America? I'm, I'm trying oh, to goodness. tell you something. <laughs> you're talking about how student athletes have all this energy. I saw one on a bird in an elevator. So what's a bird? Explain a that. A bird me. is a scooter because all those our, scooters. Our, that's all the over youngsters campus. will understand that. Oh. The older listeners will not know what a bird is. A I'm bird thinking is a he's scooter. riding a pterodactyl or something. You're saying a bird. I'm talking like, about one of those motorized scooters that are literally everywhere. Yes. I want to get one of those. On college, you're going to get one. I'm not going to get on the elevator with it. Don't I'm ride it on the elevator. No, I'm going to go all the way around. Yes. Okay. Take my groceries on and everything. Brooks picks up his second personal file. I don't know if it can carry you and your groceries <laughs> if you want all that. I've seen two people on it. Let me know. I, I, I haven't yet to ride one. I'll keep you posted on that that affair. Foul called down low and a fresh shot clock coming. Well, Kane Broom trying to make his presence felt defensively. That's a second personal foul for Broom. And I don't think that applies for him. Normally with two, you take a guy out, but he hasn't got going early. You don't want to take him out and break sort of the momentum he has going. He can play defense without fouling, but he's been playing very well over the last four games, and you don't want to break momentum. Mm -hmm. Banked free throw for Trevor Banks. That created a few oohs and ahs from hey, the online faithful banking. here at Fifth Third Arena. Right don't have Put to be open. Eye off online the window. banking, baby. Use that credit card. And then a swish. Go figure. Can't Banks, coming off this hot seven for screen. 11 from the free throw stripe this season. Broom hasn't even gotten going. Yet tonight in the Bearcats leading by 24 with just under seven minutes to play in the first half. Fredericks, now Williams on the low post. Spinning to the hoop and making it look easy. Yeah, he's so strong, his upper body, but his lower base, he's very muscular all over. Oh, how about that? That's how you stay in the game, Trevor Moore, as he knocks over our monitor and everything else is going on over here. But you see a... Uh, now look at you, man. Look, you see, you see, you get out you of the see way. See the hook of concern. Yeah, on my face? yeah. You, you. I was worried about you. <laughs> in case That's you were wondering. Mom, that was yeah. Just worried about you. Yeah, whatever. I believe you. The question is, where's the scoring going to come? Because wherever Martavius is, they are shadowing him, and they're making sure that everybody knows where he is. And yeah, they've by no means allowed him to get hot here in the first Do half. Not help off of him. Wallace will give it to McKnight. He has just three on the shot clock. Gets to the free throw. Good strike and taken out of his hands by Williams. Get your head up, Keith. Get your Keith head Williams up. Williams slowing it down right at the timeline. Now brings it to the free throw strike for the other end. And again, just seamlessly slides in the lane and puts it up and through. I don't think he wanted to look up. I think he wanted to shoot that as soon as he got the rebound. He stole it. He wanted to make that basket. Double-digit night for sophomore Keith Williams, his third of the season. Fredericks nearly got a piece of it, but Banks able to convert. He has four. I'll tell you what, this Bearcats team is looking to really capitalize off a fun trip that they had in Florida. And Kane Broom wastes no time in getting to the action. He's trying to run the offense, get everybody going. 
But one thing he does naturally is score. Not so much the three-point line, but just getting out there and just putting buckets. He wants to see the ball go through the rim. So say that's just his fifth three-pointer of the season. Hasn't really found his rhythm from downtown. Bucket at the other end for Cameron Posey, his first two of the night. Posey getting it in. Kane Broom make him up the screen and get another one. Finds Williams, who's been hot in the first half. So Semi on the low post, into the lane. Spots up and connects. How about so Semi as he does a Steph Curry to the sky? Nice jump hook by the big fella. Posey the right, quick trigger, Walsh, his three does not fall. Knocked out by the Bearcats on the baseline, and it'll stay with the Golden Lions. <laughs> you watch this, guys. Ellie's in there for about three, four seconds. Just shields everybody. And That's my point, to... right? There's three black jerseys there, Terry. And they all got out of the way. And they all got out of the way. It must thought it was Moses. Lay in for Trevor Banks. It's the buckets like that that Mick Cronin will not be happy with here in the first half. 4.30 to play his team in control, but he certainly doesn't want them to lose focus as they How about Mamadou? get a half century mark or close to it so far. Fredericks on the baseline, 12 footer, nothing but that. He likes that turnaround pump fake, frees you a little bit, then a slight fade away for separation. Eighth different Bearcat to score so far. Johnson pokes it away. Then gets tied up. Arrow favors the Bearcats, and they'll get the basketball back. One thing about Johnson, when Johnson gets on the floor, watch this little baseline, watch him read it. Pump fake to freeze you. Slight separation for the fadeaway turnaround. But when that ball gets on the floor, Logan Johnson is not timid. He goes in there as if it's a fumble in football where that ball changes hands at the bottom of the pile several times before the referee makes a termination. He gets in there, and he's very physical. He loves the contact, and he wants it all. Fredericks, free throw line, bounces off, no good. Had a great look at it. Davis grabbed the rebound. Shortest player on the court, end to end. Hands it off down low. It is swatted away by Mamadou. On the shot by Whitfield. Timeout on the floor at Fifth Third Arena. McCronin's men in command at home. that I was my freshman year. Well, Justin Jennifer certainly has grown up during his time playing for Mick Cronin. And he's playing very well this season. 21 assists and just two turnovers. That's a decent assist to turnover ratio. I mean, he takes care of the basketball. I mean, everybody keeps asking, well, how come Kane is not the starting point guard? How come Logan is not playing more? Well, Everybody on this team has a role to play, and everybody provides value. And Coach Cronin knows how to coach a team. When he puts the guys on the floor, it's for a certain purpose. And what Justin does, he's a leader on the floor. He doesn't turn the ball over. He gets guys in their spots, and he's just solid. Right now, Cronin will look to close out the half with three subs in the game. Logan Johnson being one of them. Now Jennifer on the defense as the ball goes down low to Whitfield. Whitfield bounce pass off to Davis amongst the trees. He had no chance with Mamadou there. Ball's bouncing around. It'll stay with Pine Bluff. Two to shoot. And Justin Jennifer nearly had the pick six going the other way. Didn't matter because the shot clock went off. They wanted, They were greedy. Look at this defense. Mamadou comes in on the weak side. Nope, you're not getting that one. I got that one. He's so long. And Mamadou is six foot nine. That's a solid 12 inches taller than Anthony Davis Jr. who was taking that shot. And, but you look at his athletic ability. He's long, he's wiry, he can jump out of the gym. It's just a matter of time before everything starts clicking for him. Fredericks on the right side. Working in the lane. Pushes it up and the goal 10 will be called as it was swatted away by Trevor Banks. Johnson has his first two of the night. Great move. That was, uh, I believe that was Fredericks, but that was not going in anyway. You're right, it is Frederick. Fredericks. My Oh, he double dribbled. Double dribbled. Yes, he got called it. Fredericks has four. Sorry, Logan, get away to get, get marked <laughs> down for a bucket. Your first of the night. In the meantime, another turnover for Pine Bluff. Well, when you play in these holiday tournaments, they normally give stats to guys that never got in the game before. You just hit the same thing. You know? 
You know, nobody's perfect. Yeah. They had calls with two minutes in the Mississippi game. He never got in. Fredericks. Spins it to Jennifer. Now Mamadou. Go to work, guys. Dyer. Looking to back it down. Kicks it over to Jennifer. Three. Rims off. Dyer knocked it back up. And it's going to be called for the foul on the effort. But that was a good move by Mamadou. Mamadou caught it, couldn't back the guy in, didn't want to force a shot. So he went up like he was going to shoot, made a direct cross-court pass to Jennifer. Jennifer missed it, and Mamadou decided to try to tip it. Goes over the back. But he's a guy that's he's an energy player right now. That's his role. He's in the same role this year as Trey Scott was in last year. So his job is to come in there, get rebounds, get deflections, make an impact defensively. If you happen to make some shots, that's great. But you're in there not just to spell minutes, but to make an impact defensively. Eight team foul for the Bearcats. So a one-on-one -on -one opportunity missed there for the Golden Lions. Then Cumberland's long two is no good. Put back up by Fredericks. It doesn't fall through. Sean Doss falls down. You know when nothing is going your way? When you get a rebound, nobody's near you, and you fall down on your backside for yet another turnover. Murphy's law. Fredericks had an offensive rebound. He jumped straight up, out-rebounded the guys. And look, for everybody that's wondering why keeps Cronin keeps playing Fredericks, he's starting to come around. The adjustment period from junior college to major division one takes a little bit of time. Four turnovers in the last two minutes for Pine Bluff. Two shots here for Logan Johnson. What a tough competitor he is. You know, you talk about he's a natural right-hander. He, he, he writes with his right hand. He drinks with his right hand. He dribbles and shoots with his left hand. And I asked him, why does he do that as he clanks the first one? I, why, do you, why do you shoot with your left? Well, growing up, his brother Tyler, who plays for the Miami Heat, was a lefty. He did everything left, and he wanted to be just like his brother growing up. So when he started dribbling, he started dribbling with his left hand, trying to do everything his brother did, and became sort of an identical twin until he put his own personality on it. Now he's ambidextrous. He gets to the back end on the free throw. Has his first point of the night. Just over two minutes to play in the half, and the Bearcats in control, leading by 32. McKnight. Just inside of the arm. Good help. He said good defense defense. all over him the entire night. Ten to shoot for Pine Bluff. But look at Logan. I mean, look at that. The, the attention to detail right here on McKnight. Fredericks is in his face with Logan Johnson looming if help is needed. Outlet. And they turn it over again. I mean, it's just ferocious. There's no easy baskets. No, no easy looks against this aggressive, athletic Bearcat basketball team. Johnson driving to the hoop, turns and kicks. Mamadou rattles off. And that's a shot he makes every day in practice. Talk to Cronin. He says, if you come to practice, you would think that Mamadou is the best player on the team. As he smacks it off the glass, foul first on Justin Jennifer. You look at Mamadou, man. He is so talented and, and big, and he runs like a deer. I mean, the last guy I seen run like that was Corey Blunt, the guy that can just take off and meet you down where... Kenya Martin wasn't bad either. <laughs> he got up and down the court okay for a big man. Trevor Banks. What? On that one. the free throw line. You know another guy, Justin Jennifer. Yeah. He could fly around a bit. He's not blocking nothing off the glass, though. Don't even think about it. Unless he uses one of those birds you talked about. <laughs> <laughs> Get back to our scooter discussion in the second half. Banks has eight. <laughs> We haven't even talked about Cumberland since the opening stanza. Cumberland spinning, and it falls through. Jaron into double figures. I mean, to introduce myself. He has a quiet 10 points. Yeah, it's it felt like an eternity though. since he had scored. It was loud in the first three minutes. Jackson with Cumberland directing traffic defensively in front of him. And they look at everybody pointing and talking and ready to help. Watch that spin move. Banks' his shot doesn't fall through. Fredericks had the rebound, lost it. Justin Jennifer tracks it down. Fast break for the Bearcats. Look at Justin. Jennifer Probing. surrounded oh. by black uniforms. <laughs> and still able to get it up and through. He has eight. Veteran move. You go to the YMCA, there's four guys, about five foot, 280 pounds, that make moves like that all the time. They're just slow, and they can put it up off the glass. Bearcats with 56 in the first half. It won't be a Cronin era record. They had 65 two years ago against Fairleigh Dickinson. 
in the first half, but certainly an impressive effort in the first 20 minutes. I mean, you get, don't underestimate Justin Jennifer's scoring ability. He can put it up. He's just in a role that he has to run the team. Cumberland over to Johnson. Three-pointer. Got it. How about Cumberland with the setup? Easily could have took that last shot because he's being the alpha male on the team. Instead, let's let everybody know, I'm a team player, and it's all about winning as he finds the freshman, Logan Johnson, in the corner for the three at the buzzer, and the Cats are up big. Six three-pointers in the first half for Cincinnati. 20 minutes of basketball in the books and 20 more still to come. And the Bearcats have been ferocious on defense. They've turned those defensive opportunities into points at the other end and lead 59 to 22. You're watching Bearcat basketball on Fox Sports Ohio. Tuesday men's basketball battles Arkansas Pine Bluff. Tip-off is set for 7 p.m. Season tickets are sold out, but a limited number of mini plans are on sale. Pick three games between UCLA, UConn, SMU, Wichita State, and Memphis, plus two more games of your choice, excluding the Crosstown Shootout. Call 1-877-CATS-TICKS or visit GoBearCats.com. Halftime here at Fifth Third Arena, and one of the biggest question marks for this season for the Cincinnati Bearcats, who replaces the leadership void from last year's seniors? Two guards are taking it upon themselves to do the job this season. We come in, you know, in freshman year, learning from Troy, you know, sophomore year, learning from Troy still, and, you know, playing that point guard role last year, you know, sharing it with Kane, so... You know, this year I know we had to play a big role and, you know, making sure all the young guys know what they know, know what they got to do and everything on the court and off the court. Um, I think it's real important because we have kind of three three guys, including myself, that actually played a lot of minutes. And um, everybody else is, is kind of going to be new to it, even though, like, Trey is a veteran, Nas is a veteran, but they're going to get way more minutes than what they previously got. So just um, helping those guys get through the tough times because it's going to be tough times. I had tough times my freshman year when I uh, started as a freshman, and then last year when I came here, I had tough times. So it's, you just got to get through it, and, and um, it's going to be brighter days. And that's basically what I try to preach to them every day. That like just whether they mess up in practice, just forget about it. It's going to be it's gonna get another opportunity to get better. Justin and Kane back on your leadership thing. They're they're the seniors, and I'm a big believer. Your seniors got to be all in to make your team win. Uh, and that's what you're remembered by your senior year. So I, I've been uh, really challenging them all off season. You no know, coach been, been um, on me and Justin about it every day. Whether we think we're doing good, whether we think we're doing bad, um, he's gonna let us know that we gotta continue to get better at that for the team's sake and for our sake. I think I cherished every moment that you know that I went through, every struggle, every trial, every trial and tribulation. I make sure I sunk it in and make sure I'm a better man than I was my freshman year. Jennifer and Kane are just 20 minutes away from helping the Bearcats improve to 6-1 and one on the Young campaign. We'll have first half highlights and analysis after this break. Fans staying hydrated here at halftime inside of Fifth Third Arena where the Bearcats in control 59 to 22. Welcome back to the campus of the University of Cincinnati. Tom Glader thrilled to be alongside a Final Four participant. Terry Nelson and the Bearcats have been in control, partner, literally since the tip. Put their foot on the gas pedal and never looked back. Opened up a can really quick, didn't it? Yeah, oh, no my, doubt about it. They just went going crazy. Started with the preseason. First team all-player, Jaron Cumberland, came out and hit three three-pointers, or two two-pointers, three-pointers, and then all of a sudden he hit a two-pointer. And it, before you know it, everybody's shooting threes and everybody's going. They got steals. They turned this team over 19 times in the first half. Good thing is, both teams only missed 14 shots apiece. Yeah, hard to believe with the way the score is so lopsided right now. Let's take a look at the play of Trayvon Scott because he was fantastic in the first half. Trayvon Scott wheeling around, his activity down low. One of three players in double figures. You saw a little short baseline jumper. You saw some of the creativity get the ball off the box. I'll put it back up and dunk this one. He's a springboard, not just an energy guy. Keith Williams, a guy in double figures for just the third time this season. He has 10 points, and he's been impressive as well. But they've ran nothing for him. All this stuff's come off of offensive rebounds, steals, getting the ball, bringing it up the floor. One steal, going over a dunk right here. He's a guy that's a junkyard dog. He's a perfect complement to Jaron Cumberland. That's the reason why he's in the starting lineup, because he can do so many things. doesn't require you to pass him the ball. He just finds a way to get buckets. 
Terry, what does Mick Cronin ask of his team? Hustle, defense, hustle, defense. And those numbers show he's gotten all of the above. Well, he's not only got the turnovers, but one of the things that he don't see on this is charted deflections. He likes guys to be active, but they're not only getting active, but when he's making subs, he's subbing to strength, and his guys that are on the bench are coming in, and they're contributing to a lot of these defensive stats right here. One thing he sees is that if you win a game defensively, you're pretty much going to win the game. They're pretty much going to win the game tonight, I think, leading by 37 <laughs> at the half. Jaron Cumberland. Got it started early with a three, and the Bearcats in control. Second half is next. Get three months with the halftime score. Barry Clifton with the Bearcats in control, a 37-point lead as we get start to set to start the second half. Tom Glenn, alongside my broadcast partner, Terry Nelson. If the Bearcats can hold on, this will be win number six of the season. And Terry, it's been interesting to watch this team develop. Everybody knew it would be a process. They started with Ohio State, a very difficult opponent to start the season, and have really come together since that opening loss. Well, you talk about a couple things that uh, we like. Cumberland and Broom really establishing themselves as playmakers. Not just scores, but really trying to get everybody involved and utilizing all of the assets that you have around you to make your team better. And also the DQ, the defense of Colton. Coach Cronin talked about in this tournament that he just came from the Emerald Coast Classic, they were on par with last year's teams, the last couple years' teams, where that team, if you did something one time, they figured it out and they wouldn't let you do it again. So that thing is really taking off. And two things they must improve on is role definition. Guys coming off the bench must know what they're in the game for. Trevor Moore, shoot the ball. If you're trying to make plays and do everything else, you have to get shot attempts because you're a three-point shooter. And they have to increase the pace of play. Don't walk the ball up. Make it a transition game. Allow your athletes to take precedence. Well, it's interesting. We were here just two weeks ago. And I think that role definition part has improved in those two weeks and will continue to do that over the month of December, especially with this team having some tough games coming up as they get ready for league play starting in January. I mean, look at the pressure. It's 13 to go on the clock and they're already at half court, still trying to get into their offense. Jackson trying to find his way to the lane, dumps it off, shot is missed by Banks, rebound to the Bearcats. Trevor Moore gets to start the second half, Cumberland sits, Kane Broom gets going. Broom just inside the arc, starting the second half and gets two points. Now, if he was on the Houston Rockets, they would put him on the bench because that's a long two, and they like threes only. That's why Carmelo's gone. Justin Jennifer, who started the game, not starting the second half, getting Broom a chance to pick up some more minutes. Well, they have to get Trevor guys Moore as well. So a couple changes for McCronin to start the second half. Trevor Moore. I mean, he, he points over to the bench and says, I want that deflection. I mean, they chart those, much like Miami with the turnover chain. Hmm. <laughs> they got a turnover, a, a deflections board in their locker room, and they take that serious. And it's being kept on the bench as the game goes along. Look at that. Brooks reaching in, trying to knock it away. He's going to be called for the foul, his third. Well, you go for the steal with your right, but you grab the waist with your left. And you look over, but if your left doesn't know what your right is doing, is that a foul? Think about that one. Uh, uh, <laughs> you just dropped like a Rubik's Cube on my brain. <laughs> left, right, left, oh, right. That's just, I dribble with my right. That's all I know. They're going to find out where their offense is coming from because right now the defense is totally taken out of what they're wanting to do. And right now it's one on one game to find out. Just get a shot up. Three to shoot. Jackson. There you go, partner. You asked for it. And he delivered. Has six points with the three from the corner. Yes. When it's a case of I don't know what we're going to do the first person who gets it and gets an open look take the shot and that's one thing Cronin said this team has found itself defensively to where they don't allow you to do the same thing twice once they figure it out they just want to take you out of everything that you do Trayvon Scott dribbles off his foot goes out along the baseline Terry you were on two very good teams here at the University of Cincinnati, Final Four and Elite Eight participant. When you look at it, I'm sure you had games just like this. How do you come out of the locker room when you're 18, 19, 20, 21 year old and stay focused for 20 more minutes when you're leading by 37 points? The game is not the, the lead. The game is what kind of score you can get. They want to get 100. So if you're not going to get 100, you're not going to give up 70 or 80. Scott off to Brooks. Travel. 
took an extra step. And Cincinnati turns it over again. See, this is the kind of game where you play great the first half. You're up by 36 at halftime. And if you come out flat in the second half, you will find yourself buried on the bench and not getting any more of this fun time. This is the time you get the wide open threes, the dunks, the, the highlight the field. The highlight reel. Yeah, yeah. Plays, right? So you get that. If you don't stay focused in a game like this, you will sit the entire game because now he can play the guys he hasn't played all year long and not worry about it. McKnight wide open from the free throw line. It rattles off no good. Scott unable to get the rebound. The putback went off the support. Bearcats are working right to left in all white. Broom drops it for more. Good ball movement to Williams. Over to Scott. Double team down low. Shows patience. His shot is short, but he draws a foul. Trey Scott is beautiful and poetry in motion in the middle of the floor. When he catches that ball in the high post, because he can shoot, because he can drive, because he will dunk on you and posterize you, and because he can kick out to his shooters, it makes him very dangerous in the high post. And this time, he just goes for the shot. Free throw is good by Scott. And there's the commits. Jada and Jaden have signed national letters of intent to play basketball here at UC for Coach Hurd. And he wanted to go home for that Family signing. Affair. He wanted to go home. He couldn't go. But I tell you what, Mom and Nita did a great job coaching all three of them. To have three of your babies go to the same college, Major Division One, University of Cincinnati. Easy, right? Oh, it does. You only have to go one place. I told her now it's time for her just to get a job down here and get a nice place to stay. So she can see all her babies' lives. Smith. Working along the baseline. Lost the basketball. Deflected away by Cincinnati. But you see the intensity right now. Baseline. He goes to dribble baseline. Who was standing there? Keith Williams. Nine left on the shot clock. Inbounds pass to Jackson. Williams in his face. Jackson over the right. Has nowhere to go. Stripped away. Brooks. Yeah, that's a kickball. Yeah, he can't. It's a nice idea. So I wanted the big Shock lad, Nasir off. Brooks, trying to <laughs> put a little soccer touch. If he had a size 11, he would have got away with it. But I think he's, no. well, 14, 15. It was so obvious what he was trying to do. Yeah. It's like sticking your feet in the water. You're paddling when you do that. You're not just wading not in the, the water. Not the beach anymore. Yeah, your boat starts moving. That's because you got paddle feet. I saw you on, I saw you on your Instagram. <laughs> you wouldn't you put your toes in the ocean last No, time I again. didn't, and I fed the, the seagulls. I did. I did see you feeding the seagulls. <laughs> Least, was, least surprising thing over the holiday weekend on my yeah. Instagram feed. Well, I was just having to, you know, have my coffee, taking my little or early morning beach walk, and I saw all these seagulls around this lady, and she goes, you want to feed them? I said, why not? Here, take my camera. So she's feeding them chicken nuggets of all things, not popcorn or anything, chicken nuggets. I put them in the Air Statue of Liberty style, and they're coming around me like the birds. I thought it was some type of uh, Alfred Hitchcock movie. They were all coming all it around me. It looked like one. It looked like one, and they took it out of my hand after it dropped a couple times. And this is what you're missing if you're not following T-Nell on, on T Instagram. T-Nell33, you got it. Look at Keith Williams, the intensity. Sign up now. <laughs> if you don't have Instagram, make an Instagram. It's worth it just for T-Nell33. <laughs> 3.20 gone in the second half, five on the shot clock for the Golden Lions. Look, Jesse Jackson's sitting over here, right? He's going to have Instagram before this one's over. <laughs> How about Jesse just getting the daughter married? Nigerian wedding, and he showed me some of the pictures of that. Oh, my goodness. Talk about money being splurged around there. Proud father over here as well. See, that's another reason he has to get on Instagram. Come on, Jesse. That's right. We're going to talk him into it by the end of the broadcast, and I think we'll have plenty of time to do that. Trey Scott with the offensive foul, foul, lowered that shoulder. Starting to feel good to him. You know, he's trying to put that shoulder up on him. But one thing Darren Savino, the big man coach for the Bearcats, said at the end of last season, what they wanted from... Trey Scott was to put some muscle on him and really turn him into the beast of the AAC down low. And he has definitely done that. Hasn't put on as much weight as they wanted. They wanted 20. He put on about 10 pounds of muscle. But, man, his ability to fly and make plays is one that cannot be matched by anybody on this Bearcats team. McKnight's finger roll doesn't go. Trey Scott had the rebound, knocked it out on the baseline. Bearcats have gone stone cold here in the last three and a half minutes, unable to convert a field goal, but... I'm bluff. 
two and a half minutes without scoring as well. Kane Broom knocks it away, lays it up and in, and ends the drought. And he puts it up off the glass, and Trey Scott, who was under the basket, ran the floor, wanted him to throw it in the air to dunk it, and Kane said, man, that's two points, and I'm missing. Yeah, a scorer always wants route. to score. Look at the defense. Nobody's smiling. Everybody's in the stands. You hear feet smacking on the ground with that boom mic on the baseline. Guys are talking and rotating in the box out. McKnight misses. It's just one for nine from the field in this game. Kane Broom. Free throw line extended. Got it. Stop and pop. He freezes you thinking he's going to come off that roll. When you come out at him, he'll attack that first foot forward with a quick crossover dribble and get to the hole. Broom now, Broom now has nine. Trying to get double figures like three of his teammates. Ball is deflected out on the baseline. It'll stay with Pine Bluff. 15 to 12 to play. Kane Broom on the fast break. Ali you now I'll lay it in. The NCAA tournament, their second appearance in the last three seasons. They'll head up to Milwaukee to play Illinois State on Friday. Finish the season with a 25 and 7 record and 15 and 3 in the American, which was good for second to UCF. I saw Molly Alvey and the Bearcats taking off for the NCAA tournament today. So best of luck to them. Instant gratification, meanwhile, for our broadcast partner, Terry Nelson. Instagram followers going up during the break. He checked, confirmed some of you, so TNL33. <laughs> Maybe followed by Jesse Jackson, still unconfirmed there. Three-pointer comes from the corner. i tell you what. It's fun to see both teams out here getting after it. This is an Arkansas Pine Bluff team that has to take the money grab. They have to come in here to play games I don't like know if this. George Ivory is going to agree with you. This is fun to watch right yeah, now. Yeah, well, no. He, he, when he gets back on that bus, not one of those films that you want to see right away. Broom's three-pointer is no good, but Posey fouls him. So Kane Broom will go to the stripe for three shots. Talk about how... What a tough road it's been for Arkansas Pine Bluff. They played, I told you, that triple overtime game. So 55 minutes on Friday. Then they had to turn around on Saturday and play a rival in Arkansas Little Rock. A game they won 75 to 66. So they played 95 minutes in back-to-back -back days over the weekend. Then wow. got on the bus to come here to Cincinnati. Wow. And we'll head back and get ready for Texas Tech. They finally get a chance to catch their breath. That game not till next Wednesday. I walked on the beach for 35 minutes and had to take a seat. You're talking about playing basketball 95 minutes straight. I mean, this is just something that maybe I'm giving young kids too much credit when I say that they, they're not going to get tired. You brought out the little bird. But they scrap. They get after it. Everybody who plays right now rotates. Well, I think that's the big thing is you see a three-pointer there for Posey is that there is that rotation, and that sets this team up for success because McCarnan will mix and match the lineup. We're seeing that here in the second half as Broom's running the point. And it'll set them up for success with some of those tough games coming up. UNLV on Saturday, then a week from Saturday. The Crosstown shootout, the Xavier Musketeers will be here. Don't forget the fourth. We also have uh, fourth NKU. NKU. absolutely coming north across the river next Tuesday. A game that'll air here on Fox Sports Ohio. I mean, that's just everywhere. Logan Johnson, first it was Keith Williams with his hand on the ball on the drive, and then Logan with those long arms. He sticks his hand in there and knocks it off the defender. They get the ball back right there. Broom taps it away, but possession is kept by Jackson. Now Jackson picks up Trey Scott, who reached in and commits his third personal foul. And yeah, McCormick hands, face in his hands after that foul by Trayvon Scott. He wants every possession because it's not about this game. He's coaching for the next game. Mm -hmm. Coaching for the whole season. So semi-defensively there forces a miss. Push. Williams came away with the ball. Here comes Johnson. Johnson hands it off or tried to, but took it out on the baseline. So one thing about Logan, he's going to run to the contact, shield you with one part of his body, keep dribbling, get to the hole, either lay it up, or find somebody who's available to dish down to the finish. Posey over to the right. Hardy 
Now to the far side, Doss. Three-pointer is no good. Hardy got the rebound. Smith puts it up and gets it to fall through. He put it up under duress. Williams had a handle that ball. Maybe even LEL. Like to see what this team's gonna do with this high post screen right now. Room. Three-pointer, no good, too strong, gets his own rebound. Drives to the hoop, kicks it outside Williams. Along the baseline, off to Scott. Scott in the lane, double team, taken out of his hands by Jackson. One too many turns. A big dunk at the other end for Sean Doss. And the he lead has is down four to four points. Bearcats still doubling up Pine Bluff, but having a tougher time, you could say, at the offensive end here in the second half. But one thing you're seeing with this team now, you just start, you're, you're seeing guys come into new roles. Right now, there's no spacing on the floor for the Cats. They're trying to figure out what they're doing, and it's a Kane Broom show. He's got to set the table for all the other players. And that's a bad shot. And a shot clock well, won't be a shot clock violation as Pine Bluff took possession, then it comes back to Cincinnati. Broom will hold on to it. Johnson's three-pointer, no good. Oh, Scott right. gets the rebound, then tries to deflect it off from the Golden Lions. He does just that, and we'll have substitutions for Cincinnati after the break. Doss with a highlight reel, right-handed jam. Take you need a break. the California wildfires by visiting redcross.org. Call 1-800-RED-CROSS or text the word CA wildfires to 90999 to make a $10 donation. The Bearcats at home doubling up Arkansas Pine Bluff and Keen Broom here in the second half leaving an impression. He's a scorer. Scores finding a way to score. And, and it starts with his defensive intensity. He penetrates, backs up. Nobody picks him up, so he just pulls up. Nice little 20-footer. But he scores in bunches. He sits the general. Justin Jennifer checks back into the game. But look at those scores right there. Kane Broom had three in the first. Starting to heat up here in the second half. And you bring back in the general. And more right there. That's his problem right there. That's the reason he's 0 for 5 is because every time he catches the ball, he's easily ran off of the three-point line by anybody who is just looking at him instead of letting it fly. Sean Fredericks gets a three-pointer. Four Bearcats in double figures tonight. Fredericks trying to work his way and join the party. He would be the fifth. Stands at seven right now. Jackson. Falling away shot nearly went down, so Seme grabbed the rebound. How about that? Swatted in the face. Two hand rebound. You just saw his lip this weekend. He got hit in the game. It's George Mason, and his lip swole up. Looked like a spare tire. More to so Seme. Working down low in the lane. Kicks it out, Jennifer. Jennifer back to so Seme. Left handed hook is short. And the rebound's gobbled up by Chris Smith. Yeah, he's got to pass that one. Sean Doss trying to lay it in, is fouled. So the pick and roll, Jennifer to Sosemi, he catches the ball on the block, didn't have a shot, he put it up anyway, instead of making the diagonal pass to the wide open Fredericks who was waiting at the three point line. And that's one of the things that Elias must evolve to is being a better passer out of the block because you're not going to finish a lot if it's not a layup opportunity because he hasn't matured to that level. That part of his game has not, uh, he hasn't developed that part, partner. So he's got to learn to catch it on the block, create a double team, and find the open guy, much like Gary Clark would have done. Doss hits one of two free throws. He's fine. Speaking of Gary Clark, continues to do great things with the Houston Rockets. That two-way contract he's on is going to be a one-way contract very soon. Well, they are. See, that's right there. Right there, that is Ellie. So Seme. Yes. Foul down low. Did he say, you see him hit me in the mouth? <laughs> you see me hit me in the mouth? Can they go to the screen? They're going to go to the screen and look at this yep. because he said they hit him in the mouth. And he just, off of a couple games ago, he got hit in the mouth and that top lip swole up. I mean, it was something big. He ran straight to the bench and... Bob Mangine went and put a towel on him and took him in the back and tried to 
stop the swelling from happening. But watch this weak side rebound. He knows every time that ball goes up, he's going to be on the weak side. Now watch as he goes up. It's hit across the face. No, that was nothing. Oh, right there. That was, but I don't think that's yeah, that's egregious. Not. Yeah, that was just a dead ball play, and he was a little frustrated and tried to knock the ball away and happened to hit. I think it was unnecessary. I don't necessarily think it's egregious. Chris Smith picks up his fourth personal foul. Could be upgraded to a flagrant one. Yeah, the rules are changing more and more. You got a flagrant one now on the hook on the rebound, which is ridiculous. I mean, they must sit in rooms with martinis and cigars and come up with, hey, how can we make this game a little bit more for the more, more, more points? They said nothing out of it, so two free throws yeah. coming here. Just got to be able to make some of these free throws. So Semi misses on the front end of two shots. Coming into this game, he's 4 of 20. 20% 20 from the free throw line. And that one looked good. Well, to his credit, he's been shooting with... He's got a broken middle finger, along with a very bruised thumb on his shooting hand, but doesn't stop him from rebounding the basketball. The big center from the Congo has five. Logan Johnson getting in, gets the ball, keeps control. And then lays it up and in, all hustle. Plastic for the man. freshman. I thought this was the Incredibles. He's on one side of the basket and does it reverse on the other side with those long arms. But he gets so many deflections because of the, the length of his arms. Look at that. Another Johnson one. Has his shot blocked. And then Johnson this time has to slow it down. Off to Jennifer. Quick trigger on three. Got it. The general puts those three fingers on the ground as he runs back down the floor. Stop and pop. All created, Logan Johnson with the block shot, first of all, of Eliel Sosemi. 11 for Justin Jennifer, five Bearcats in double figures tonight. They got another steal, push the pace. Cincinnati looking like the team we saw in the first half all of a sudden, and then they turn it over along the baseline. I mean, watch this, Logan with the long arms, it pats it away. He's on one side of the basket, jumps up, leans over the other side with the long length. And then Jennifer with the stop and pop off of the Logan feed. I'll tell you what, they are clicking on all cylinders tonight. Have been generally the last six games. Cronin didn't like, said it was a bad idea. It was a great idea when he booked Ohio State. Became a bad idea on the day of the game. Huh. I think, you, I, honestly, I think for this team it worked out well. It worked out well because, yeah, you got a chance to see what you're bad at and what you need to work on. You get a bunch of new guys in new situations and new roles, and finally they're starting to grow into their roles and they realize what they have, and they got a pretty good team that just needs to understand what they're good at, and then you get plays like this. Johnson on the low post, shot is short. Rebound to McKnight, who has not been able to get going tonight. Roberts at the other end. The body up knocked away. Trevor Moore got back into position. Principle of verticality. Jumped straight up. There's the five that have scored in double figures tonight, led by Keith Williams with 12. And again, the strength of this team is going to be in its depth and in the fact that they have so many different guys who can attack and be the man on any given night. They're not just depending on one player. Cumberland wasn't even going to play today. Coach Cronin wasn't going to play him because he has a slight calf strain. He comes in, gets the first eight points. Turn the ball over, Mamadou. He gets the first eight points, and then he sits for a long period of time, comes back in and scores. Bob Mangin and Doc Colosimo, Angelo Colosimo on the end of that bench with Ellie looking at that cut over his lip. How about the general coming in there? Nice little pass into Fredericks. Fade away. Frederick's in the line, in the lane, excuse me, lost it. But Jennifer able to control. And he's fouled as he goes up with it. He's got to get that uh, score get Marcus up. Wallace. See, these are games where I applaud Justin Jennifer because in the bigger games, in the bigger moments, he'll take wide open shots only. And he'll look to set everybody else up. That's where you get the 21 assists now and two turnovers. But in games like this where... He has the freedom to freelance a little bit more and look for his offense. 
He's a very capable scorer. If you've seen him in practice, he's a guy that puts tremendous pressure on the opposite guard, whether it be Logan Johnson, Kane Broom. He scores. It's because of his body, his power. Look at it. When he first came in, he looked like a bartender. He, had the, he was just heavy, big. Body fat was up. He refurbished his body, lost a lot of weight, a lot of body fat, got his muscle up, his bench press is on fleek. He's got a little kid now, a son. He's going to be, he said his son's going to be a little pit bull too. I tell you what, I'm proud of a young man like that who has stayed the course, recrafted his body, and now he is one of Mitch Cronin's favorite players. I like that, refurbished. He refurbishes, yeah. It's not new. Justin Jennifer on those two free throws. Those are his first two free throw attempts and makes of the season. How about that? And a timeout on the floor. 7.58 to play in the Queen City. Bearcats remain in control. Touchdowns, nearly seven touchdowns. 35, 34 points off of turnovers. I mean, think about that. They turn the ball over, they come down, and they got 36 points in the paint. A little tip away right there by Kane Broom. Puts it off the glass. I mean, just active hands in the passing lane. Logan Johnson with the stretch Armstrong move. Puts it up and in, and they are just relentless defensively, and they take after their head coach, Coach Cronin, who is intense all the time. Well, he but will certainly appreciate the effort of forcing 24 turnovers and Turning that into 34 points, that's just too shy of the total. The Golden Lions have an entire game. But you listen to Cronin, he says there has to be a level, an element of fun to go along with what they do because it can't be business all the time. He loves this group. He loves working with this group because they go hard. They don't complain. He's got to break guys into new roles, and sometimes that comes with a, a, a tough way to, to do it. But they don't run. They embrace the challenge. Guys don't sit on the end of the bench and pout. And there's turnover number 25. And there's 25 right there. So they came up with a quarter piece right now of turnovers. But I'm liking the how, how guys are really adapting to their roles. You know the keep is going to be tough. Keep Williams tough on the baseline. An aggressive defender. Logan Johnson is going to set the table for guys. Fredericks is going to, he's sort of rolling into his role. Got nice post-up game. Here's the variable right here. Mamadou can't connect on a short finger roll. Jumper didn't go through. Look at that. Look at a block at the other end, and here we go. Moore throwing it up. Nobody there. A little bit reckless as it was deflected away. Yeah. He was like, I'm, I got a fast break. <laughs> he was looking for the trailer. He was, he was looking for somebody to pass to so he can spot up. Fredericks gets the inbounds pass. His shot is short. Bearcats on an 8-0 run over the last three-plus minutes. A steal, and now Moore's going to be able to do something with this. Lays it up and through. Oh, you got to dunk the ball. He's earned that. He has been active defensively, and that's what Coach Corner wants to see. His shot will come eventually. But what he can do to help this team is shoot the passing lane, be smart defensively, and get to talking and get everybody else going. He's a weapon, and you got to see him that way. Tenth different Bearcat to score tonight. Here's Trevor Moore as he gets in the books. <laughs> and Mamadou picks up the foul, his second. Oh, I like it when guys get in the game, and they don't want to foul because they don't want to get yelled at. So the minute they get a foul, the first thing they say is me, and then they look over at the bench. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, it was you. Uh, he's a fun guy to be around, Mamadou. Does, he has one of the best senses of humor. I tell you what. He was in a game the other day where he shot the ball and it goes over the backboard and he starts running down the floor and he's doing the follow through motion. And so the entire time I'm laughing so hard. I asked him in the restaurant the other day, we were having dinner at uh, Benny Hanna's or somewhere in, in Florida. And I said, what's up with that shot? He goes, oh, it, it was my elbow. I had a Kobe Bryant elbow pad on and that messed it up. Then he said, well, it wasn't that. It was just a bad shot. He eventually came to the truth. Somehow, some way, you always find your way there. Johnson lays it up and in. With his right, I told you, ambidextrous around the basket. You're going to fall in love with this young man. He is tough as nails. Dawson Look at that. In the another, another steal. Deflected away. Logan Johnson. Johnson. Off the backboard. Dyer with a minute two-hand dunk. I tell you what. 
We had a defensive player who's now doing radio for me right now, Kevin Johnson, who was one of the best off-the-ball defenders we've had at UC. And right now what you're seeing is when a guy is attacking away from Logan Johnson, he steps in there, he's got about five deflections off the ball, and he gets that ball out, and he started to break several times because of the length of his hands. An arm, I'm sorry. With Mamadou getting on the score sheet, now 11 different Bearcats have scored in this game. And Cincinnati feeling it with five and a half minutes left. Williams trying to dish it down on the no-look pass into a double team. Take a look back. Logan Johnson set it up perfectly. And Mamadou, he was under the basket, beat everybody on the fast break. Look at him. And he runs the floor. Well, it's going to be walk-on time Sam for about Martin. five minutes. <laughs> That's about right tonight, the way this one has gone. Sam Martin will get in the game, and he's not one that's shy. He will put it up. He's a young man that is no stranger to the competition. And I think Cronin just went down and had a word with John Cause as well. And said, that's right. Don't worry. You'll be next. Moore. Three ball. <laughs> the short. McKnight grabs the rebound. Got to get, get back and identify. You can't leave him wide. There you go. It's a smart play by Keith Williams. I am not leaving McKnight at the top to get you Anthony Davis Jr. <laughs> Seventh team foul on Pine Bluff. We'll bring the walk on Sam Martin, Cincinnati native. Summit Country Day. You know, you usually get in, you have 60 seconds, right? When you're a walk on, maybe a minute. Come on. Maybe they run one play for you. And then you get that rebound with like 29 seconds left. The coach says, sit. We're not running another play. Right. Sorry. Yeah, you so got you four and a half minutes, kid. Don't put me in with See 30 what you seconds can do. and then tell me to hold the ball. Oh, look out. Kept it alive after nearly turning it over. Kicks it over to Fredericks. And he gets an assist. Now, people are going to look at Frederick and say, okay, he's starting to have a good game. But don't just discount what you just saw right there. You knocked the ball, knocked away. Spin dribble. Finds Fredericks in the corner. Nice penetrating kick out, and Fredericks knocks it down with the defender in his face. I mean, look at it. Spin dribble. Catch it. Get in there. Little R2 on the joystick. Bam. Find the guy wide open. The corner shots are the easiest shots to make in basketball because they're the shortest. And if you can find a guy that's a corner shooter, like Fredericks is, then you have a guy that can really make an impact. Fredericks now to double figures, so six Bearcats have reached double figures. The last time that happened against Savannah State, November 10th of last season, Mamadou with another big dunk. Mamadou, talent and potential just oozing out of his veins. It's going to be special. Trying to get the block at the other head. <laughs> as he gets a little piece of his own medicine, and he has something to say as he dunked that basketball, too. Right back at you. Williams running the point with three and a half minutes left and at 92 to 44 advantage. ISO situation up top. Fredericks has it taken out of his hand. Doss having a hard time picking it up. Finally does. Sam Martin. It into the lane and Sam Martin <laughs> draws the charge. That'll bring him to their feet here at Fifth Third Arena as we head to timeout. Everybody in on the action, including the big man. And the walk-on drawing a charge. Friend, do you like fruit now? Do you like the taste of fruit? <laughs> uh, no, I don't. Still, still haven't tried it. You still have uh, banana? No. Peach? No. Absolutely not? Nectarine? No, no, no. Grapes? No. Good Lord. Come on, man. <laughs> Your diet consists of? Uh, pizza, nuggets, <laughs> french fries, a lot of candy. You That's have it. a sixth grade diet. <laughs> I am so confused. How has he never had any fruit? Man, that, that's, that's pop. How does Mike Rayfeld allow that? Well, now he has shakes and different things to get the nutrition that he has. Remember, he dropped about 20 pounds and reshaped his body. But you can't make a guy do it unless you grind it up and put it in some type of 
smoothie or something like He's that. He's not a baby. We're not making baby food here. Hey, hey. Everybody <laughs> eats Gerber. fruit. He needs to be sponsored by peach Gerber. peach cobbler. Jesse had like three portions of the, the peach cobbler. No, he won't even have ice cream if he's got frozen peaches in it. I'm so confused. Mamadou, the rocker step from 15 on the baseline. Six for Mamadou. Just when you think you know somebody, Jaron Cumberland doesn't eat fruit. Look at that. The third steal now. John Collins is more. up, and that's getting big cheers from the crowd here in Cincinnati. Meanwhile, Williams over to Moore. Thought about a three, now steps back, takes it, and drains it. He deserves that. It's his first three on the year, but he's put the work in defensively today to earn the right to play the rest of this half and sort of get going. Cronin knows he's got to get him going because he's a weapon. Bearcats closing in on a century mark with two and a half to play. One-on-one -on -one defender. Mamadou loves to play one-on-one -on -one defense, and he gets mad when somebody takes his guy. He will play one-on-one -on -one all day long. Fredericks has it stripped. Wallace laid it up and in. Goaltend will be calm to count the bucket. Cos comes in, and Williams sits out. So it's about to get cozy up in here. This is a guy who's... Looks like a linebacker. I mean, look at the chest on this young man. You have Coles and Martin in together. We had a good time last year in the Cayman Islands. Man, those guys were on the paddle boards and kayaking. Up the glass. Boy. Laying it up. And in. And the foul. Rocked you to sleep. You think he's going to be an on-the-ball screen. You look for the screener. And all of a sudden, he does a little Texas two-step, right to left crossover, puts it up off the glass, gets hit, and then just stands there and poses. Look at this little right to left. They are on their feet here in fifth, third arena for the native son, Sam Martin. Oh, he's going to do it. And if he makes this, not only gets the and one, but he gets a chance to get triple digits on the board. 100 for the catch. And he does. The walk-on makes it 100. The route is on with two minutes to play. First 100-point game since November 13th of 2017. So just about a year ago. Look at Mamadou down there playing cat and mouse, Scotty Pippen style in the post. I'm not letting you touch me. And he does, oh, and the block Frederick's shot. Frederick's got a piece of it, and Mamadou trying to swat it away. Fouls called on Cincinnati. Free throws coming for Pine Bluff. You know, Fredericks is only 6'4". And I remember a couple of 6'4 guys that stand out that can really leap and defend the basket. Herb Jones would be one. I remember back with uh, Syracuse, Stephen Thompson, back in the late 80s, come out of Crenshaw, L.A. But these 6'4 players, these hybrid players that can guard multiple positions, he's a great weak side shot blocker. And he's starting to come into his own as he's scoring more. But his versatility, Coach, Crum Coach, Coach Cronin says he wants to see Jaron Cumberland as well as Fredericks in the game together. Martin, stop. Oh, pops, connects. Get you some, little fella. Five for the walk-on. Don't you call him a walk-on anymore. Walk-on is a three-piece. He's got five. He's a player now. Coase gets the rebound on the air ball. Look at Coase. See if he can get on the score sheet. He might be too big to give him the ball, man. His chest. Yeah. Look at that. The ball is crying right now. The entire Bearcats bench standing. Get you one. Hoping to see a bucket. Coase down low. Dished it off. Intercepted. Going Mines the other way. Outlet. And the lay on, layup is good for Doss. Mamadou now is going to slow it down. Actually, he's going to take a three. Oh. <laughs> okay. And, and Cronin looks at him like, okay, big fella. He got his legs crossed on the bench. Mick's laughing. Yes. The like, entire okay. coaching staff Do with it. smiles on their face. When I tell you that this guy is talented and he just needs some, some time to understand what's going on, if he ever gets on track, it's another element that makes this team about 12 deep. And one. Oh, they call it off. Another crowd. charge. Sammy with Second the triple time, single. Sam Martin. Look at that transition. Let me stop and pop. Left hand, stutter step, tap sure. the toe. Bing, bing. And as you go back down, let me take a look at my coach. Even the cheerleaders. Look at the, look at the bench. They're like, you, can you see this? Do you believe this? Yeah, they're enjoying it tonight, folks. 
Cincinnati's going to improve to 6-1 and one on the season. Arkansas Pine Bluff will fall to 2-5. and five. What a game. Clock winding down. We, we should hear from Trayvon Scott. There before it's all said and done. And the final horn sounds as Cincinnati wins the fifth meeting with the Golden Lions. We'll step aside and take a break and hear from Trayvon Scott. Hopefully when we return, the final Cincinnati 105, Arkansas Pine Bluff 49. The Post Game Report is next. Congratulations. Well, up back with you inside a fifth third arena. Cincinnati, their sixth win of the season and now joined by Trayvon Scott, one of the many Bearcats in double figures tonight. Did you guys feel, Trey, that it was clicking from the jump? Yeah, we felt it was clicking. Uh, our coaches were just telling us the whole week to be aggressive. And when we get around the rim, just score, uh, go up strong. And I mean, a lot of our points were, yeah, a lot of our buckets came from inside. I mean, we hit some shots, but a lot of, everyone did a great job of scoring inside, like going up strong and, you know, so we executed that part very well. The game has turned to guards. Mm -hmm. All of the 10 first team, first and second, all AAC, eight of them are guards. Mm -hmm. They cannot discount what guys like you do for this team, mm -hmm. your ability to rebound block shots and guard multiple positions. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, and today's like, in society now, like, that's how the game going, like, in the NBA as well, like, small ball. I mean, I mean, I was just blessed, like, God blessed me with the ability to be able to do that, guard big, uh, four and a five, and be able to switch on the uh, point guard, shooting guard. I mean, it's just something like, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm doing okay at it, but it's something I want to keep working at, you know, I want to be great at it. So, I mean, my coaches, stay on me every day about uh, defense and guarding the ball and my stance. They just own me getting, uh, for me to get better and better, and that's what I'm going to keep doing, listening and keep getting better, because I know that could take me a long way. Trayvon, did we see tonight the strength in this team is really the depth, that the rotation, doesn't matter which five players are on the floor, mm -hmm. this team's dangerous no matter who's out there scoring. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would say so. I think after our tournament in Florida, uh, the players and the coaches, I mean, we, we we put in a lot of, like, different lineups, so we were all able to see who could play with who and who could gel with who. And, I mean, everyone I mean, everyone did, did their part. Like, when, and when everyone do their part, no matter who it is, from the first five to the, 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 the other people coming in, all the teammates coming in, when everyone do their part, it's like we're a dangerous team. And like, But, like, I'm, I'm going to say, we just got to keep getting better and keep getting better. Like, every, uh, there's room on our team for everyone to grow and improve, including myself. And we keep in, getting better individually and as a team, we can make a big run. And last Lastly, what is it for those who don't know what Mamadou can do? Mm. They got a chance to see something that he doesn't practice. Mamadou is by far the most athletic player on our team. Uh, I just, I'm, I mean, we guard each other every day, and I, I tell them just to be confident, just like the same thing the older players told me, just be confident and take your time. Like when, like I mean, I see a lot of similarities in, with me and Mamadou. Like when we both rush, right. like it's still to this point when we rush, we make uh, mistakes, a bad shot here and there, a turnover. When we both take our time. Like, we either get fouled or we score. And Mamadou, he did what, exactly what our coaches was telling him to do. Get the ball, take your time, see what you got, and go up and finish strong around the rim. And he did it. Like, he keep taking his time. I mean, his, his minutes will increase. Mamadou looked plenty confident tonight, as did the team. Congratulations on the win, Trayvon. We appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, that is Trayvon Scott joining us here courtside at Fifth Third Arena, where Cincinnati victorious. And the exclamation point came from Mamadou Piera. We'll be back to wrap it up next. If your game is authorized by the American Athletic Conference and rebroadcast transmission or other use of any image, sound, account, or description of this game without the express written consent of the American Athletic Conference is strictly prohibited. 105 to 49, the final score in tonight here inside a fifth third arena. Tom Glader alongside Terry Nelson to wrap it up. And Terry McCronin wants his team to come out and play hard, regardless of who the opponent is. He very much got that tonight. They got that. They were active all over the floor. I mean, you talk about the deflections, the steals, the turnovers, the dunks, the threes. They put a nice package together. And you see the points off turnovers. They had 40 points off turnovers tonight. I mean, that's just incredible. The deflections that led to just touchdowns. You know, it's one thing to get a turnover, one thing to get a steal, but touchdowns really kill you when they pick the ball off and they go score those pick sixes that they would like to call them, these football analogies, but they were just active everywhere. Then you saw the little off the glass action. Helped that the Bearcats shot 64%, made 11 three-pointers. 
Those 45 points off turnovers, as you talked about, 46 in the paint, 19 assists, everything UC did, they did very well. And it's an important step for this team because now they go out west. UNLV coming up on Saturday is going to be a much tougher test. Well, UNLV will provide a tougher test, but these Cincinnati Bearcats team that went playing in a neutral site over in, in Destin in this Emerald Coast Classic really gave them an opportunity to understand that no matter where they play, if they continue to bring the intensity, they will be just fine. Well, it's UNLV on Saturday. Then Northern Kentucky is here at Fifth Third Arena, a game that we'll have for you on Fox Sports Ohio. Then the Crosstown Shootout, Mississippi State coming up, UCLA and South Carolina State to round out non-conference play. Another game that will be on Fox Sports Ohio. From Fifth Third Arena, the Cincinnati Bearcats, 105, knockoff Arkansas Pine Bluff, who scored just 49. For Terry Nelson, I'm Tom Glare. Don't forget to watch Bearcat Insider tomorrow at 6 p.m. at our next UC Hoops broadcast next Tuesday versus NKU. You've been watching Bearcat Basketball on Fox Sports Ohio. Good night, everybody. It